finish this uh, a little session uh, or this little consideration this morning in this session before us as we study the context concerning the gospel from a positive point of view and from a ne negative point of view and uh, some of the difficulties which arise uh, when the uh, holding down of the truth is one of the experiences of mankind. And I uh, am of the opinion that this particular section <coughs> deals primarily with unsaved people. Yet with dealing with unsaved people, I'm firmly convinced that it also sets forth principles which are true for any who may find themselves in this particular predicament. Now in verses 18, down through verse uh, 20 particularly, I've sort of changed the outline here. You have the revelation of the wrath of God. And then in verses 21 through 32, you have the uh, result of the wrath of God in the judgment of God. Now, the wrath of God is a matter that's revealed, and it's revealed in light of certain circumstances, and then it's revealed in light of action of God as he unfolds some judgment. But first of all, the Apostle Paul is quick to state that he's not ashamed of the gospel of Christ and some of the wonderful things relating to it. And the gospel is not only that which is going to save, but the gospel is that which demands a life. And it demands that the just shall live by faith. We're saved from faith for the purpose of faith. Therefore, we're to live by faith. And then he begins with... A, quite a quite a an order of revelation concerning the wrath of God, how that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, or who hold down, who trample the truth of God down. And then I uh, uh, started last time with the emphasis, beginning with verse 21. And this is what strikes me so forcibly concerning the business of not only is it true for the unsaved and light of history as well as today, but it, I believe it's also true in principle form uh, for uh, many who would profess to know the Lord. For instance, in verse 21, it's very, very forceful to me because of when they knew God, when they knew God. Now, see, it's on the basis and the platform of a sphere of knowledge. Now, I realize that, that in this context that you have the revelation of God clearly revealed in, cre in creation and it's known in, in, innately by man. But I believe it goes a little bit farther than that because when they knew God, they had a response. And that response is they glorified him not as God. Now, uh, if we know and we do not give him his rightful place, now we're in for trouble. And the rest of this chapter unveils the consequences of knowing the Lord, knowing him, doesn't necessarily mean having trusted in him, but knowing God, now then, not giving God his rightful place. We've got a situation going on today in the world that's uh, it's quite dangerous, isn't it? Those people over there in the Middle East, they believe in God, don't they? But their God is Allah. And that particular religion had its beginning around the six, 600s uh, by Muhammad. Muhammad was one of his, all his prophets. Now, this is not the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, they have a strict obedience to their pagan God, Allah. They innately 
have some kind of a knowledge about God, and they have made their God Allah. Well, that's not the God of the revelation that's spoken of here in this portion of Scripture at all. Now then, you recall in the Reagan administration how that there was quite a to-do that um, uh, Nancy, um, isn't she the one who got uh, uh, her husband to um, uh, have some counsel with a media? I think so. And oh boy, they really blew that up, didn't they? Now then, I uh, heard on the news some time ago how that Bush called in a lot of uh, counselors, and the newscaster said this, he wasn't allowing any stone to be unturned. He had Billy Graham there. Well, now listen. Why did he call on Billy Graham? Unless he felt as though that there was something to this religious business. Now, um, whether he's right or wrong, that's not the point. But the issue is this. He is still giving ear to some kind of a spiritual influence, isn't he? Now that I haven't heard anyone, I haven't heard anyone on the news give any glory to God. All trusting in diplomacy, all trusting in might, all trusting in technology, all trusting in mass, all trusting in everything else. And oh, they got the germ warfare and they got the atomic and everything else. Everything trust, trust, trust in what? God. Well, I'm glad the Lord's behind a lot of things anyway. And I'm thankful that there's some of the boys and hope some of the ladies that are over there, they, they do know the Lord as their Savior. But it's a dangerous thing to have a knowledge of God and not give Him His rightful place. They glorified Him not, but notice verse 23 says, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. They changed it. That's what man will do. They'll change it, but notice the reaction of God. Verse 24, God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dis dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He gave them up to an illicit fellowship. Now, notice when God acted. First, there was revelation. There was rejection. Then there's reaction. Right? That's what you've got. Now then, you also have reaction in verse 25. Or response, shall we say who changed the truth of God. Now, this strikes me. The truth of God, knowing God, and now the response to knowing God, some kind of a revelation, they're going to change the truth. The truth of God into, literally, is a lie. And as a result... They worshipped and served creation more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Now then, notice the reaction of God. When there becomes a wrong worship, a wrong worship, now then, God gave them up. God gave them over to something else now. And a wrong worship is going to result in a deplorable conduct because God withdraws his hands just that much up to vile affections for even their women <coughs> did change the natural use into that which is against nature 
and likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned with themselves, and etc., and so forth. And uh, you have a terrible immoral state. The United States and Canada are considered to be what? Christian democracies. Isn't that right? Do we have any of this going on? I don't lie. It is absolutely, absolutely astounding the fantastic power politically that the lesbians and the homosexuals have today. They're milking the government, which is your taxes, for billions of dollars for research which will enable them to continue on in their licentious manner of life. Why? Is because a response they gave to God brought a reaction from God and God, judgment is that he turned them over to it. This is judgment of God. All right, now then, in their response, they like they did something else. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Now, get the... Get the progression of thought. When they knew God, glorified Him not, God gave them over to an illicit fellowship. Secondly, then they attack His truth. Knowing God, turn Him over. Secondly, they attack His truth. God gave them over to a deplorable, immoral, illicit life. Now then they come to the place where they don't even want, don't even want to retain God in their thinking. No. Now then, please notice, please notice the response of God or the reaction of God in light of their response. We don't want to know anything about you. So, it's what? God gave them over to a what? a reprobate mind. I think probably one of the most classic uh, areas of degradation has come about in the last 10 years in both the United States and Canada, particularly when it comes to the matter of education. There was a time, wasn't there? There was a time when there was some freedom of religion in the schools. But there was a lady in the States by the name of Madame O'Hare, and she pretty well ruined something like that down in the States. Now, I don't know who it was responsible up here in Canada. Anyway, <laughs> you know what's going on up here in Canada. They don't want, they don't want, they don't want God in their minds. Turn it over to everyone. Now listen. God does something. And oh, it is deplorable what takes place when, number one, when they knew God, they changed it. When they changed the truth of God, terrible. And when they don't want to even know God, now you watch it. God says, all right. You got what you want in your thinking. Gave them over to a reprobate mind. And this is an amazing word, this word reprobate. It comes from a Greek word, which is dokimazo. Dokimazo is the verb form, which means to put to a test within view of gaining benefit. It isn't like giving an exam to flunk someone. It's giving an exam whereby they'll all make A+. Plus. Now then, this is not a verb form. 
but it has the root of that verb, well, what we call the alpha privative, which negates it. And so instead of a mind that is looking for the benefit of a result, now it's a mind that's bent on just the opposite. Not a mind for benefit spiritually at all, but it is a mind that's bent on the opposite. And you'll see what it says in the last part of verse 28, to do those things which are not con convenient <coughs> or to do those things which are not right. Now, why such a degradation in our society in so-called Christian democracy. It's because of this last thing. Minds are being changed. Minds are being changed. Now then, does this also work with reference to Christians? I think so. In principle, I think this is very definitely talking about the unsaved, to be sure. But now look. I've seen it happen in the few years we've been right here with reference to some precious people. I love them dearly. At one time, at one time, as I would talk to some of these dear folks that are way out of fellowship and way down the tube and so forth, why well, they were right down the line with us. But now, oh, Doc, I don't think so. I don't think so. Why? There's a change in the mind and it's manifested in a change in conduct. And this has not only happened to just one or two. My gracious. I'm just appalled. Just appalled at what can take place. And I'm here, I, 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 I'm here to uh, tell you that God can change that. I saw a wonderful couple get down this far. And I dealt with them for over three years. And I said, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. And I saw repentance on their part. Man, a life that's wonderful now. And we just have a great time of talking and discussing spiritual matters. And they'll pick what little brain I got, and we just have a great time. <laughs> but it takes repentance, folks. It takes repentance. There's got to be a change. God's got to change the mind. Meta not et or a change in thinking within view, a changed life. So the cure for a reprobate mind is repentance. And that's true for dear people who have been saved, but who have not given God his rightful place find themselves enjoying a fellowship of the water level in which they've reached. And then when they began to change the truth of God to meet their circumstances, look out, you're going to get into some strong immorality. And when that takes place, uh, we don't even want that stuff anymore. Look out, your thinking is bad. And you live a life with a conduct a life with a conduct that, believe me, you will produce actions which are not right. Now, let's notice some of the actions which are not right here, even going beyond <laughs> the business of uh, uh, the immorality. Okay, verses 29 through 32. And this is an amazing commentary of a life with thinking which will not, which results in not a right manner of conduct. 
Here it says, being filled with all unrighteousness. Now then, notice what unrighteousness is qualified by. First of all, it's qualified by immorality. Isn't that right? Immorality. Um, on the news, uh, um, ABC is probably some of you have seen ABC News. They've been running a, 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 a series on, uh, oh, I forget what they call it, on uh, immoral conduct and how the, one of the leading crimes, leading crimes in the States is rape. And so they've been giving several uh, documentaries on, on this business. And uh, Father Thinking is so cockeyed. It is deplorable. The so-called education of women and the education of men. <laughs> education. My foot needs to be some real repentance, I'll tell you that, and that crime would dry up. Well, one of the first things with a mind that's not right <coughs> is immorality. Secondly, he classifies this as wickedness and covetousness. Well, that's, uh, that's quite a pastime, isn't it? Covetousness. You know what covetousness is, don't you? That's what makes you go out and buy a new Cadillac if, you're, if your neighbor's got a Cadillac. Well, they're not going to outdo you. Or buy a, buy a helicopter or buy a something. Yes, indeed. Then maliciousness. How malicious can people? And full of envy. And murder. And then, uh, listen to this, debate. Now, I, I've been convicted of some things. Paul says, Timothy, avoid some of this vain jangling. What is one of the classic actions that you're going to find in our present day commons. Hmm? Debate over issues, isn't that right? And I want to tell you, you listen to that it's in the States there too. Do you know why the United States lost out in Korea and the United States lost out in Vietnam? It's because a bunch of people debated and the politicians lost the thing. I was in World War II and there was a president of the United States canned, Douglas MacArthur. He was the Allied Supreme Commander in the Pacific and he was a good one. And he told them when they got over there in the Korea, you better go right on up into the north and clean things out. And Truman can do for that. And later on, you got Korea. Truman was right. I, I mean, uh, MacArthur was right. Truman was wrong. Debate, debate, debate. Now, you can out-debate me, but I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to change my mind. <laughs> you just not, you might win your you might might win the argument. I'm awful for an argument, but I guarantee you're not going to change me if I know I'm right. Now then, deceit. Oh, yeah. malignity. My, how they malign things. It's a cancer. And then whispers, if you want, let me give you a secret. One of the best secrets in the world to destroy a ministry is this right here. 
go behind someone's back and start the cancer rolling. The old man has lived long enough to see several ministries ruined just that way. They won't stand up and be forthright with you and let you smack them. No, they have to go behind your back. Behind your back. Who does this? Who does this? People whose minds are called reprobate minds. Christians are not Christians, just still acting the same as a reprobate mind. That's right. Backbiters. Haters of God. Proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Why do kids do what they do? Hmm? Well, you help them out because you passed on the sin nature to them. <laughs> That's right. But those little minds, and I want to tell you, a lot of a lot of these conferences I I know are very good, but basically the problem is spiritual. And if you can get kids lined out spiritually right and talk to them spiritually instead of a lot of other junk, well then that you'll find you'll find these ones. Turning. Now then, without understanding. What do you mean, without understanding? You mean to tell me that these brilliant technicians are ignorant? No. But a reprobate mind without spiritual understanding. And uh, the thinking is foolishness to them. Covenant breakers. I think there is a word that hurts me probably more than anything else with reference today. You see, I, w I grew up in a time and in a society and in some circumstances that if a person said something, that was it. My daddy pounded it, and, pounded, and he wasn't a very smart man, education-wise, only the third grade. But, boy, he sure got a, a whale of a lot of battery of lawyers beat today. He said, boys, make your word as good as your body. And it's one of the things which just frustrates me to no end in the ministry. It is not the matter of lack of ability, but lack of reliability. And the reliability is because you can't trust them. They'll say one thing. What is that a sign of? You know what that's a sign of? That's a sign of a mind. That the Bible calls a reprobate mind. Don't forget that. What a commendation for individuals who are plagued with that type of of a lack of reliability. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Now then notice verse 32. 
And I'll never forget one of the fellows down at Dallas had a Bible study, and he was teaching this. And I thought it was a good application. Now notice, who knowing? Who knowing now? It isn't that they don't know. Who knowing the judgment of God? Now they know rightfully. You go up and ask a person, do you think that's right? No. What do you think is going to be the result of that? Oh, God's going to get mad or something like that, you know. And they flick it off. How many times have you heard this? Do you know something, mister? You're headed for hell. Yeah, but I'm going to have lots of company. Haven't you heard that? I have time and time again. Some company. You're going to be chewing on his arm, and he's going to be chewing on your arm. If, if, if you like to be chewed on that way, well, that's good company, isn't it? <laughs> but they know the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Now then, they know this, they know the result, but they not only do the same, they're involved in the same conduct, but now notice the last part of verse 32. But have pleasure in them that do them. And I remember <laughs> this boy said, <laughs> they stand off and this is your cheering section. Keep it going, boys. Keep it going. Yay, Ray. Raw, raw, raw. And so forth like that. It's just like you have a big cheering section. Continually agging them on. Go, team, go. Go, you illicit reprobates. Go, you reprobates. Go, you reprobates. Go, go. This is what we like. Pleasure. I want to close with just one sort of strong word. Be careful of choosing a life that's fun. Now you better. Better mark that. Be careful of choosing the life and the conduct which is a life of pleasure. Okay? Now, there was a lady snap back once with a verse. But God made all things for us to enjoy. Isn't that right? He sure did. And the only enjoyment you and I are going to rightfully have is when it brings glory to God. Not when it's fun and pleasure for the flesh. Because when you choose a life that you like, that you like, oh, that's fun. Look at it. I have tested our young people several times with reference to these conferences they keep going to. How did you like it? Great. It was fun. It was fun. Oh. But how about the spiritual? 
Oh, yeah, we had that too. <laughs> we had that too. That's fine. Listen, folks. That kind of thinking is the thinking of a reprobate mind. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. I, 